better than that. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. All right, better. We'll have a few more times to do that. But we do rejoice as we come together on this Easter Sunday to give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. We do continue to pray for those who are listed in your bulletin. I do have a few um, additions to that list. Uh, Kathleen Harpster's uh, sister-in-law, uh, jo uh, Joan Kelly, is in, uh, in hospice care, so if you would keep her in your prayers. Prayers are also requested for Matthew, and then also for Chuck Heldvig, who is in the hospital. So is there anyone else that we should be especially mindful of in this morning's worship? Yes. I saw one of their... Yes. May family. Yes. So this is going under anesthesia month for As always, I invite those who are joining us online to add any other prayers to that list. Uh, that we may keep out in our prayers this morning. Please stand as we begin our worship, at our, our, as we are called to worship first by our fanfare. <laughs> We too might be raised. With mourning turned to dancing and joy, overcoming despair. We offer our praise. For Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let us join in seeing Jesus Christ is risen today.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You loved us so completely that you willingly submitted to a human death, and by your sacrifice you destroyed death forever. Give us new life every day that we might proclaim the good news of your salvation to all the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
a reading from the 118th Psalm. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. This is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Find the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right hand and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Can you be seated? I invite the children forward. Celebrate that God, Jesus did the impossible. He came back to life after being dead. Not just dead for a little while. He just didn't like, they didn't just bring him back with like the paddles and they pop him back to, right? That they, that he came back to death after 24 days. 24 days and he came back to life. And so that's what we celebrate at Easter, that those, all those things that seemed impossible, 
can become possible. Like a talking rabbit. Like a talking rabbit. That would seem possible to a or a talking dog, right? It's, a, it's an impossible like thing. Like a talking cat? Or a talking cat. I don't know if I'd want my cats to talk to me. <laughs> they do talk to me, I just don't know what they're saying. You have what? You have a flaming, flamingo stuffy that can talk. It talks. What does it say? Well, the other way that just says banana. It says banana. Well, that's very silly. That's very silly. Okay. Well, I brought. I got some things for you guys. All right. Did you want them? There's all different ones. Take one and then go back to two. Then you come forward. I don't know about that. <laughs> Savior Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Inconceivable. All right, who knows where that's from? Anybody know where it is? Princess Bride. Princess Bride. <laughs> and I can never remember who's saying, but everything in that, in, if you watch Princess Bride, there's one character, everything is inconceivable. Of course, I can't quite say it like he did, but it was with quite this emphasis. Everything. And somebody else says, I don't think you, I don't think you really know what that means. Because that was his answer to everything. There are things that seem inconceivable, unusual, impossible in our world, and, and things that have changed over time. I mean, yes, there was a time where it seemed inconceivable, impossible for, G, for, for man to go to the moon. Right? There was a time, or even for man to take flight, or even for cancer to be able to be treated, or for lungs to be replaced. Or mountains to climb. Inconceivable, impossible. But thanks to the curiosity of explorers, of scientists, of people in the medical community, that these impossible things have turned around, have become impossible, no longer insurmountable. Curiosity is a wonderful thing. Because it invites us to learn even more about what it is or to try to figure out when things don't seem to work together. You know, it's kind of like those puzzle things where uh, those kind of puzzle boxes where things don't quite fit together uh, right, right, and you have to get them just right. Or the Rubik's Cube, which for me is like, impossible. that's one of those impossible things is a Rubik's Cube, right? I don't have the brain for that. But others who can do it, who can do it so quickly, and in fact, I've seen them with the people who can do it without even really looking, and da, 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 and somehow they get it all back together. Because at one point they were curious to look at what we might do to put it all together. One of my favorite uh, TV shows is Ted Lasso. Everybody, have you guys seen Ted Lasso? It was on Apple TV. One of my favorite shows. And one of my favorite scenes from that is uh, where he talks about curiosity. So he um, has this bet with this with this uh, former owner of this of the soccer team. It's very you know complicated. And says, "All right, whoever wins kind of gets the soccer team back." I think was the bet, right? And so you know Rupert, who was the other guy, was you know very good at darts. So they played darts, and so it was getting close. And it was it was Ted's last chance, and he had to get some impossible shots in order to win this. And he's like, you know. People used to make fun of me, but then I realized that they were not curious. Because if they were curious, bing, and he gets a shot. He says, if they were curious, they would have asked me, have I ever played darts before? Bing. He says, why, yes, I did. Every Saturday with my dad until he died when I was 16. Bing. And he wins. So people underestimated me my whole life because they weren't curious. 
curious leads us to learn, to explore, to try and to try again, and to not look at something that's seemingly inconceivable or impossible, and to just leave it well, just throw up our hands, and that's it. We're done. Inconceivable. The women had gone to the tomb. Now this is the same story we hear in each of the Gospels. Combination of different people. One time it's only Mary Magdalene, others it's more women. And here we have three of the women. And we're told they go to the tomb, and as they're going, well, this is a really big stone. Like, we probably should have planned this before. Who can we ask to come with us and to roll away the stone so that we can anoint Jesus' body, so that we can do this as a part of their ritual in order to honor him and to remember him and to spend some time in mourning at his graveside? Who will roll away the stone for us? And yet, when they get there, they see that not only is it rolled back, but Jesus ain't there. He's not there at all. There's this other young man in a, in a white clothes, which we'll just assume, doesn't specifically say it, but we'll assume it's an angel, it's someone else, who said, yes, Jesus is not here. He's gone on ahead of you to Galilee. Go, tell the disciples, go see that that's where he'll be. He's been raised from the dead, just like he told you time and time again, that just as he told you that he would die, that he would be crucified, but he also said that he will rise again, and they didn't quite believe it. In fact, so much so that it says they fled in terror and amazement. And that's where Mark Stossel ends. In terror and amazement. Because it seemed too impossible to them that this shouldn't be how it happened, that Jesus should have been there, we should have been able to do the things we're supposed to do, and they fled. Now, if you were to open your Bibles and look at Mark, over the years, there's been two possible other endings kind of tacked on there. But scholars say, yeah, these were added much later. This was not Mark's original document, or Mark's original gospel. So you can read them, it's possible. But here it ends with terror and amazement. And that could have been the end of the story. If that's the only gospel that we had, it would be like, well, kind of what's the point? But it leaves it open-ended. And if we're curious, we not only look to the other gospels, but we rely then on the witness of people throughout the ages. People will never necessarily know where the message was passed from person to person to person and that what seemed impossible, inconceivable even, was truly amazing and possible. For as we hear time and time again in scripture, Nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible with God. To us, these many years later, 2,000 years later, we have to rely upon the witness of all those who came before us. Because we don't see Jesus in the flesh and the blood. We don't see Jesus as the disciples eventually did, as the women eventually did, because we know the story continued on, because it got passed down again and again and again. What seemed inconceivable became impossible through the witness of others, through the curiosity of others. The women could have just like gone home, stayed, said, I mean, here it says they don't tell anybody, but we know they must have told somebody. Right? They must have told somebody. And they were all curious enough that they went to Galilee to see that just maybe, just maybe, Jesus would be there. Are we curious today? Are we willing to accept what seems impossible, inconceivable, improbable, 
That Jesus not only did rise from the dead, but that Jesus brings God's resurrection to power to bear upon our lives and our world today. That Jesus, this wasn't just some event back in the day, but that God continues to show God's resurrecting power today. Through someone getting a transplant. Through us walking on the moon. Through the curiosity to say, God inspires this vast universe. Created this vast universe. With all of its wonders. And we're called upon to be curious about it. To see how God's hand is at work in our midst. To see in the face of children. The wonder, that's one of the things I love about little kids, is everything, yes, everything, is still full of wonder. And they become curious about every little thing. Things you wouldn't even think about, like the things we just look over. They become curious, like, what's this? What can I see in this? How curious are we? To see the ways in which God's hands are at work in our midst, through one another, through nature, through this world, to be curious, to be curious about the impossible, because that's what Jesus offers us. To say, don't accept things the way that they are, particularly all the brokenness of this world. Don't just accept it that that's only the way it's going to be. But be curious about what might be possible, what God might inspire or help us to do in our daily lives. To look at the brokenness of this world and to say, that doesn't need to be the final answer. With the war and the violence, with the hunger, with the difficulties that everyone faces, that in the midst of that, it's hard to see what life is going to be like. Remember, after Michael died, my life was a blur. And you can't tell me what exactly happened in those days afterwards. Because it just seemed a blur. And all I could do was just what was right in front of me. Right in front of me. And that's all I could see. Because I couldn't see a future at that point. It was just inconceivable and impossible. But you all and my family and others carried me through that time and helped me to get me not only on the other side, that that didn't change, I was still gone, but to see me through that time to say there is another day. There is more. It's coming in this life and in this world. That life doesn't end with that. My love for Michael hasn't changed. It's still there. Even though he's not physically with me. But we continue on. In the face of the impossible and the inconceivable. Because love is so possible. Because love continues. Because God takes what seems inconceivable and brings it to reality brings the possibilities of new life, of another day, of another Easter. Not just the Easter's of the past, not just that morning with the women who fled in terror and amazement, but with each new day, to know that God is with us and that God uh, walks alongside us and that God points to us to say, be curious, be curious about the impossible and see what I can do with that. It's for this that I do proclaim, thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing our next hymn.
people, as we proclaim the impossibility of all that God offers, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God from the Father, God from God, life from life, to God from to God. seasonal climates or in climates where the cycles of change are more subtle, we will always see signs of renewal and growth. May each new sprout or newborn life form be a joyful proclamation of the resurrection. God of new life, in mercy, in mercy, hear our prayer. as you call upon Jesus' women disciples to proclaim the resurrection, continue to rise up leaders from among the marginalized communities that we might open our eyes to new and effective solutions to the world's challenges. God of new life, and mercy hear our prayer. You promise us eternal life, for there will be no more sickness or grief. Until that time, send your healing strength to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they might be comforted in their pain. We pause to pray especially for those we name now, aloud or in our hearts. We also lift up in prayer, Shep, yeah, George, Heidi, Georgie, Donna, the Myers family, the Christian family, Franco, Ned, Betty, and David, for those who have known his name and those who do not know Christ's name. God of new life, and mercy hear our prayer. People around the world are celebrating this holiest of days, the resounding declaration that makes us Christian. Unite the whole world church in every nation, that all might work together toward your reign of justice for all people. God of new life, and mercy hear our prayer. With gratitude, we remember all whose Easter faith has inspired us in our own walk with you. May we rejoice now in their memory and with them eternally in the world to come. God of new life, in mercy hear our prayer. Here other petitions may be offered silently, aloud, or in comments. We lift up Joan and Matthew and Lucy. Pray for your healing for them, for your presence in the midst of their difficulties. We pray for Chuck and for the Bruce the Choir Department and the May family. Be with them and offer them your comfort and your strength. We do place in your arms all for whom we pray out loud or in our hearts, confident in your mercy and grace through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And share a sign of peace with one another. And you may be seated as we continue with our offering. Dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. 
and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Christ bring you.
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Living God, as the disciples ate and drank with the risen Lord, we have been nourished with the very presence of Christ. Through this meal, may we be strengthened to keep your word and proclaim the power of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May be seated. We take this opportunity to share our mission and ministry announcements. I'd ask first, Irene, did you have something? Just say it for them. <laughs> it is coffee hour today. If you would like to join us, and uh, if anyone would like to sign up for coffee hour another day, their cheek is empty and the gallery in our class needs to be closed. Okay, great. Thank you. Others? Yes, Michelle. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but when I walk in the door and I see Trinity Brass sitting there, I start smiling right away. Not that they're past for the rest of the <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, a few announcements. Um, one is you may have seen some little Jesuses around. So this is some, yep, there's some over there. There's also some in a basket on the way out. Um, so you're, because we all need a little Jesus uh, in our lives. Uh, there's also a little insert in your bulletin, a uh, little card that you can take with us if you don't want to take Jesus with you. Or if you want to take one and give it to someone else who might need a little Jesus, uh, need a little sign of God's love and grace in their lives. Uh, I'd invite you to take those, please. Um, also, we um, uh, we are extending our, we had a Lenten outreach offering. I got a few of the piggy banks back, um, but we decided to, um, when I say we sometimes, it usually means me, um, decided to to extend that uh, through the Easter season, uh, through until Pentecost, so we're gonna do that for the ELCA World Hunger. Uh, so we'll see if we can buy a cow or a goat, some chicks, whatever, we'll see how much we accumulate. Uh, to be able to do that, to sponsor those through the ELCA Good Gifts. We are starting a new study on our Wednesday night and Thursday morning um, called The Sailboat Church. It's a book study. I do have copies of the books available if folks are interested in participating or if you want to just read it on your own. It's not a very thick book, uh, but it's about are we a church that's a sailboat or a rowboat? <clears throat> very curious. Um, so if you'd like to see me, uh, they're about $10 a piece. Uh, I, pe I paid for them already. Uh, we're also, as a part of that, there's a devotional guide that um, has, is available. We also put it out on our email. Uh, it's a daily, like a 40-day prayer thing. So it's a, a scripture passage, and then what it, it has it so that it has God talking to us through that. Uh, so there's copies of that available in the back uh, if you'd like to um, uh, participate in that. Um, our shelter has uh, concluded for this year. It will not start up again until uh, next fall, um, but we thank uh, Charlie and Irene for all their hard work in making that so, so successful year after year after year after year after how many years? <laughs> tireless work that goes into that. We, they're stepping back from the role as coordinators. They'll still help out at times and help us in the transition. Um, but we're looking to, because nobody can fill their shoes, we're breaking it down into a variety of, of different kinds of areas. Uh, someone to coordinate the volunteers, another to supplies, uh, to, to set up and clean up, uh, transferring equipment uh, and the like. So we've had that in the bulletin uh, the past few weeks about the different responsibilities. Uh, if you're curious about it, we're only asking for a commitment of one year. Because we know sometimes when you get into something, it's like forever, right? That's kind of how the church operates. Um, but we're looking for folks to at least do it for a year to be, help us with the transition process. Uh, so if you're interested in that, see me or see Charlie and Irene uh, for some more information. Our next uh, first Friday potluck is this next Friday. So if you've not come to that, it's an, uh, just a nice evening of fellowship and really good food. Um, so we say six o'clock, yeah, people start gathering at six. We really don't start eating till like 6.30ish, right? So come, just bring a dish to pass. We don't really have a theme this, this month, maybe April, <laughs> April showers. Um, maybe not showers, but April flowers. Um, so uh, please do join us at the Reading Fellowship Hall this Friday. Any other announcements? Seeing none, I invite you to stand as we conclude with God's blessing.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord fill you with peace, love, and much laughter. And may he set you free to celebrate the life that God has given you in all its fullness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join in our final hymn.
know what I just said? Oh, my Yes, but uh, I'm using these ones because they're my 